In the previous video, we looked at the Caesar Cipher and how to break it. We've talked about the Caesar Cipher several times, but this was the first time that we actually programmed how to break it using brute force. So a Caesar Cipher is a monoalphabetic substitution cipher. That means that you're substituting one letter for another, and the monoalphabetic part is that there's only one letter that each other letter becomes. Um, that might sound a little confusing, but for example, if we're using a Caesar shift of 1, then in that message, A will always be B. B will always be C. Um, if we're using a Caesar shift of, like, 5, then A will always become F, and B will always become G, and C will always become H, etc. So, within that message, it is always becoming the same thing. Now, the Caesar cipher is very weak and a very poor cipher partially because there's only 25 possible combinations. Now that being said, there's other ways that we can rearrange the alphabet, right? If we're substituting one letter for another, then the Caesar cipher is just 25 of the possible methods. If you want to do the math, I mean, there's there's a bunch out there. So for example, if I launch Firefox, and if I just go to Google, so the number of possible combinations is, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty high. So, 26 factorial, this this is the number of, of possible combinations out there. 4 to e to the 26. That's a huge, huge number. So, how do we program that? We could use the same method that we used in some of the previous videos with, like, the Morse code, but there's, there's an easier way. There's also a way that we can make it where the user can have some input into that, where you could write a program where the user gets to choose a keyword. That's a little bit different, that's more of a keyword cipher than just sort of a custom random substitution cipher, but we'll we'll get into that as well. Not this video, but in the next one. So how do we do a substitution cipher that's not just Caesar? So I'm going to make a new file. And I'm just going to call it substitution. Substitution. There we go, substitution. Like I said, it's going to look a lot like the Caesar one. So basic substitution cipher. Let's just put a few comments in here. I guess we could put in mono alphabetic. And we'll talk about ciphers that aren't monoalphabetic later. So what I'm going to do is, in this previous video, I used a string here of letters, and then I pushed those letters into this list here, the ciphertext. I'm going to do something kind of similar, actually. Alright, so we're going to set this up pretty much the same way we set up the Caesar program at the start. So we're going to have our clear text, and that'll be user input, so user inputs, enter your secret message, and once again, I don't want to deal with capitals. You could, but I, I just, I'm not up for it right now. It would make this longer than it needs to be, and you can add it in your own if you'd like. So valid letters equals this is going to be the alphabet, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Important that we have all of them. Important that we have space as well. Space is a character. And I'm not going to have shift. Instead, I'm going to have key. And uh, that's going to actually equal the same string for right now. I will change it later, and I will explain later. I'm going to have my new string again. And uh, we'll just keep that an empty string, just like last time. And we'll have cipher text, which will be an empty list, just like last time. We talked about lists in the previous videos, so hopefully you're starting to feel like you have a little bit of an understanding of them. We're going to add a loop in here, so for char in clear text. So what this will do is the user input, it's going to run whatever's in here for each and every letter inside of the user input. So if the user decided to 
pair it back right what I wrote if they decided to put the same thing back in it would do it for the E and then it would do it for the N, the T, the E, the R, etc. all the way down for each letter. We'll say if char is sorry if char in valid letters then new string plus equals char. So what this is going to do if you remember from the previous video it's going to go through this whole string and if that char exists in here it's going to add it to the new string basically what this does is if they put in some sort of um, special character that I wasn't expecting um, or punctuation in this case because I have no punctuation in my valid letters then it won't include it in the new string it won't try to encrypt it it'll just ignore it um, it will still do capitals because I have converted all capitals to lower so there will be no capitals in the clear text so we're fine with capitals you might want to modify yours if you're using a different language that has letters with accents um, or if you communicate with people that have letters with accents in their name then you might want to modify your valid letters which means you'll also have to modify the key but that's fine you can do that if you wanted capitals in here you could include capitals too in your valid letters I just I just chose not to all right so this is essentially kind of the start of my program. It has sort of that same basic start as, as Caesar Break. If we look, it's pretty much the same. There's a few differences in naming conventions, but it's it's pretty much the same. So we're gonna do this a little differently, right? We're gonna say that hmm, what's the best way to explain this? Okay. So we have this key here, and I'm gonna space this out right now so it's exactly underneath my valid letters. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna program this differently. I'm gonna use index values. So I'm going to have Python look for the letters inside of the clear text, well, inside of the new string actually, and it's going to find the index value of it in valid letters, and it's going to replace it with whatever character is in that same spot in the key. Right now these are identical, so there will be no change, but uh, we, can, we can play with that in a moment. All right, so now we need to actually encrypt it. So let's make a function, so def encrypt right oops give it arguments even if we choose not to have any now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a variable I'm gonna call this index values and it's going to be valid letters oops this is going to be a list valid letters dot index and this needs to be char so this is tying up here right and uh, what it's going to do is it's going to look for the index value of the character inside of valid letters and it's going to do that for each character each char in our new string I'm not pulling the original clear text because they might use a character that I didn't expect so it's pulling it from here which is the approved letters only. <clears throat> Alright, so here we're going to do return. And so when this function runs, it's going to return things out of it. It's going to return a string. And this will be dot join and key and index key for index in index values so this is pulling from here right so just a moment ago I said that this is looking for the index value of each character inside of the user input so if the user input is tacos it's gonna find the index value of T first then what it's gonna do is it's gonna find the equal index value in the key and replace it with whatever letter is there so in this case T for T because they line up perfectly and it's going to join that replace letter into what it's going to return back to us whoever's running the program that should be what happens so now let's actually call the function so it works and let's see what happens enter secret message tacos are awesome and it didn't print oh Ah, okay, 
So it returned the value, but it didn't actually do anything. With it. So let's do um, encrypted, encrypted, am I spelling that right? Oh, okay, whatever. Encrypted message equals encrypt. So now this return value will be stored here. And then we're going to print encrypted message. All right. Tacos are awesome. There we go, and it kicked out right back the same thing because the two line up. But if we want to test this, we can move the A to the end, and this is basically like a Caesar shift of one, and we can see if that works. Tacos are awesome. There we go. So T became U, which it did, so that's good. Now right now, that was a lot of like new stuff just to do the Caesar cipher, so why? But we could mix this up differently. It doesn't have to be the same order. We could change this. So that's what this allows. It allows us to create our own order here of the letters. I could have actually also just done encrypt here. But if you want to play with this more later, storing it in a variable is not a bad idea. Let's try that. Tacos are awesome. Yeah, so you could do that too. Didn't have to make it a variable. But I like variables. So if we wanted to, we could move this around. So like um, we could put the C over here and we could put the W right here and move these three characters over here. And uh, yeah, it, do it, doesn't really, it doesn't really matter where you move these. Now you wanna make sure that you have all the letters in here because if you have like the same one twice, you're not paying attention, that could cause problems if multiple letters are becoming the same letter. That could be problematic. So if we try it again, Tacos are awesome. There we go. So T became T because I accidentally happened to get it there again, but that's okay. Um, A became M, O became an L, and etc. So this is now just a randomized custom substitution cipher that I've created. Now, there is another way to do this. Instead of just randomizing the order because that would be either hard to tell someone else what the order is we could we could actually instead use a keyword cipher so a keyword cipher is where you put a word in front of it right so like maybe my keyword actually is tacos since I'm such a fan what we need to do now is we need to delete the letters that we used here from the rest of the alphabet so bye bye T bye bye A C O S. And now if we run this, tacos are awesome. There it is, encrypted with a substitution cipher of keyword tacos. Um, now this still isn't very great because if you notice, all the letters after S start to line up. And that's what's going to happen in keyword ciphers. You're typically going to notice that the further down the alphabet it gets, more letters start to line up after you get closer and closer to passing the place values of the letters you used in your keyword. But it works. Now, how do we allow the user to make their own key? We're going to do that in the next video because that's going to take a little bit more explanation and will be a little bit longer. I don't want to do it all in one giant sitting.